Hi, my name is Alex. I'm a YouTuber and a self-taught chef. I've been cooking for more than 15 years and I'm really excited to share with you the fundamental skills you need to prepare healthy and beautifully prepared dishes. Now I want to talk about knife skills, but before we do that, there are two things you need, absolutely required. First, a sharp knife. Sharp knife goes where you want, dull knife goes where it wants. And then you need a stable work surface. In this case, I've placed a wet paper towel under my cutting board, so it doesn't go anywhere. First cut, the rough cut, very useful for stews and mash. Just because it's a rough cut, it doesn't mean you have to be careless about this. In fact, let me show you how things need to be cut in the kitchen, starting with the holding hands. The holding hand should have the fingers curled in so that you don't cut them. Now the cutting hand shouldn't be holding the knife by the handle. You should be pinching the blade using your thumb and your index. That's how you get a very stable cut. This is called the pinch grip, by the way. Uh, and then you would place that blade on the knuckles of your holding hand and that would serve as a guide to move the blade up and down. This way the movement is going to be safe and you're not going to cut yourself. And then clack, boom, 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 boom. I mentioned using a wide blade is useful also for this because when you shovel food out of the cutting board then a wide blade is going to perform better. Let's move on to the slice cut. You see, this is a perfect example of what not to do. Uh, food needs to be stable on the cutting board, meaning that you need to first uh, trim a side in order for it not to move anymore. You can adjust the thickness of your slices by moving your fingers towards the cut or just away from it. So. We've done slices, let's move on to strips. For this, I'm gonna use a carrot. It's a little trickier to work with than the zucchini we just used. Basically, because it's a little harder. You have to be careful with this one. And that is why I just created a flat side on it. It's not going anywhere. The beginning is the same, you make a few slices, but then you stack them up and you turn them into strips. You don't have to go fast. That is something I've seen in loads of movies where chefs go super fast. You don't have to do this, okay? This is home cooking. These strips would be amazing for any stir fries, but also they will be a great base for making dices afterwards. It goes from slices to strips and then to dices. When you've got strips, you turn them 90 degrees and you cut them to get dices. Now, having small dices like this is amazing because they're going to cook pretty fast. That would be a solid base of a bolognese sauce, for example, if you pair them with onions and celery. Next, I want to cover the special case of the onion. This item is so common in the kitchen that it has like a dedicated knife cut. First, you want to slice it in half and work on each half separately. You're going to make a few cuts vertically like this, but you, you don't want to go all the way through. You still want to be attached to the root. Cool. So I, I did the vertical cuts. Then chef tends to do a few horizontal cuts. Well, I think they're pretty useless since the onion is just layers on layers. You turn the onion 90 degrees. You do the claw grip again. You protect your fingers always, and then you do vertical cuts again. This is a critical moment. The food you cut always needs to be stable. Now, a narrow base combined with a taller dimension basically doesn't scream for stability. What you do, you flip it on its side, and then it's stable again. It's like magic. And then you repeat. and then you're left with this. This is how you chop an onion. So I've shown rough cuts and finer cuts. 
I also need to show you how to deal with super delicate stuff. Herbs is a perfect example of that. They are very fragile, very fresh, very delicate, and they should be treated with respect and care. So I would pick a few leaves like this. Then I would stack them up. Roll them a bit like a cigar. And then the motion of the blade is very important because if you go up and down, you're most likely going to be, you know, bruising the leaves. You're going to see that because there's going to be a pool of green juices at the bottom. What you want to do instead is doing some slices, some long slices. And it goes like this. The tip of the blade can remain in contact with the board. And this is how you cut herbs the right way. Now, I was very careful for one specific reason. This is used for finishing touches. So you want to sprinkle these on top of a beautiful pasta dish, for example. And that's why you want them to be intact. Now you know how to use a knife the good and safe way. Thanks for joining me for this lesson. This was one part of my cooking class on Skillshare. Now join me in the full class and learn how to pick the right ingredients, how to use the tools efficiently and how to basically become the chef you already are. Click on the link below and I cannot wait to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.